Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shireen and today I'm going to be doing a very easy, very wearable, glowy kind of springtime look where instead of using eyeshadow as eyeshadow, I use highlighter and bronzer as eyeshadow. Can you also use blush as eyeshadow? I think it can be nice and a good intro to rather than purchase your first eyeshadow palette, start using products that you already have as eyeshadow to kind of try it on for size, see how you feel about it, play with some techniques, get comfortable, and then go ahead and invest money in an eyeshadow palette. Because at that point, you would have some idea of how frequently you might use that eyeshadow palette and um, kind of have got to experiment and know your taste and your style a little bit better. Something else about highlighters, bronzers, and blushes is that, well, they're powders, and of course you want to check that they're eye safe before you apply them to your eyes. Most of them are, but every once in a while there'll be like that one stray ingredient or a highlighter that's too chunky where the glitters aren't eye safe, um, but for the most part they should be. And other than being powders, they tend to be less pigmented powders than a lot of eyeshadows are, and that makes them a little safer to play with because you're going to deposit less color at a time. And also they tend to be more neutral colors um, and so they'll have a more natural look. I'm also going to keep my brushes pretty simple. I'm just going to use these brushes in those tutorials. So we have one for bronzer, for highlight, for blush, and then I picked out ah, these three for the eyes. And of course, my makeup sponge. This is a look that I typically wear to go outside. <laughs> I like it for daytime because it is pretty quick and pretty easy and again does look a little bit more natural. It is just all glowy and fresh and pretty subtle. I think that the more dramatic looks do film better so I'm not sure how this is going to look on camera but hopefully it kind of translates like the effect that I'm trying to have translates on the camera. Ooh, I'm going to do this really fun lip color. This is Spice to go along with my springtime theme or colors. Okay, work. Right. The first step to glowy skin is moisturized skin. So I'm gonna start out with an eye cream. This is the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Eye Cream, which I use at daytime because I have dry skin. Yeah. But just any eye cream that you typically use, um, if you want to start using eye cream but don't right now, there are many options which I will not discuss in this video at the drugstore and at the high end one. Um, ingredients that you want to look out for include, well hyaluronic acid is the one that I would say you should most look out for in an eye cream. Eye cream, now I'm going to move on to a moisturizer. This is the Protini Polypeptide Cream from Drunk Elephant. And I'm going to put that on my face. I did a whole video where I discussed every single ingredient in this product and what its benefits are and what research is out there for it. So go check that out if you care. lip balm. This is the Amore Pacific Moisture Bound Lip Treatment. This is sort of intended to be used as a lip mask, I believe, but I have very dry lips, so I use it several times a day. I think it's particularly helpful underneath a matte liquid lipstick to have a very hydrating lip balm. I use an eyelash serum. This is the Lancer one. Um, you don't need to use the Lancer one. I've heard that they all work equally well. I also use it on my brows because the front of my brows are sparser than the rest of my brows and I'm trying to uh, help them flourish more. Finally, I'm going to use sunscreen. This is the Thermal Aven 50 SPF sunscreen. I have never heard that name pronounced, so I don't know if that is how it is pronounced. 
but this protects against UVA and UVB rays and I always think that if you're going to have a one-step skincare routine, it should just be sunscreen. If you're going to have a two-step skincare routine, it should be sunscreen and moisturizer. Another thing I want to know is that you should always try to get some sunscreen on your eyelids because I feel like when people apply sunscreen on their face, they typically just like make a little circle around their eyes and the skin on your eye is super, super sensitive. Something else I really like about this product, by the way, is that it's very hydrating, so this brings some glow to the skin as well. So now it's time to move on to the makeup. So on the day today, especially on a day where I've just hydrated my skin, I might not use a primer, so today I'm not going to. I'm just going to go right in with my L'Oreal Pro Glow. This is my favorite foundation, which is fortunate for me because it is a drugstore foundation. I'm going to do a full face of drugstore, this will be featured prominently, trust me. Depending on your skin, this might be too much glow, um, so you might want to go for another product, but if you want a glowy foundation experience, just test out a bunch and see what gives you the kind of dewy vibe that you want from your face product. Concealer. Today I'm going to be using the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Concealer. It is called the Complete Coverage Serum Concealer, and this is in the shade Medium Golden, which I think is a exceptionally good shade for me. I really enjoy this product. But this is just a full coverage, but still very, very dewy, very, very beautiful. The reason why I don't use this as much when I'm doing heavier looks I in a lot of my other videos um, is because this creases super quickly um, because it is a more hydrating dewy formula I think you'll find that is the case for a lot of more hydrating dewy concealer formulas and once I'm done blending it out I'm gonna again tap some of that coverage not precise spot concealing just a little bit more coverage Maybe another coat. Dark under eyes, very prominent. Has anything been able to fix or reduce them? No, I think it's just genetic for me. I've heard that vitamin E works on some people. So now I'm going to move on to bronzer. I'm going to start with my eyes. So I'm going to use this as my transition shade. That's actually a great use for bronzer because most bronzers are actually a perfect transition shade and the bronzer that's your shade will be your perfect transition shade. So I'm just going to take some of that on my Morphe M441. I'm going to work that into the crease. You will notice that I didn't use any face powder. That is because I do not like face powder because I have dry skin. If you have oily skin or if face powder it, you feel is like an important part of your routine, you like a slightly more matte look, etc., then of course go in with that face powder. Um, I like my skin to look almost greasy and I do not have oily skin so I just tend to skip that. So I did take this throughout my crease but I am concentrating it kind of on this outer V, and I am going to create a little bit, like a hint of a line up here to sort of pull my face back and create this very sort of fierce look. But yeah, just concentrating it more in this outer portion because I'm going to place my highlight on the inner portion and sort of enlarge my eyelid, make it look a little more bright and glowy. Once you're happy with that, grab a flat shader brush and a highlight of your choice. I'm going to be using two. So I'm going to start out with Joseph Colors Miramay, which is this color highlight. I know that it looks in the pan like it wouldn't be a highlight on me, but it is, trust me. So I'm just going to pick up some of this with this brush, okay, and I'm going to lay that. all along my eye. 
So, because highlights tend to be less pigmented than eyeshadows, you can be a little bit more free-handed or lax with your placement. And I am dragging this up beyond my crease. I really like when it goes into like that dip of your eye socket and illuminates that. That just gives it a little bit more glow. And just like a great surface to reflect off of. And then I'm going to go back in with my crease brush and I am going to add some more bronzer to kind of blend that into the highlight so it looks a little bit more natural. Then I'm going to go into my Jouer Citrine highlight which is a brighter highlight, definitely a lighter highlight as well. And I'm going to layer that over Mirame. But I'm going to drag it less far out and keep it more constrained to the inner corner, thereby bringing some extra brightness. I patted citrine on on top of that original highlight. I also brought it in to the inner corner to give a pop of glow right there. I'm also going to bring it on my lower lash line slightly, like so. Because I really like when there's a lot of glow kind of towards the center of your eye. Then I'm going to go back in with the bronzer and I'm going to take my Morphe M506 and I'm going to tap some of that on there and take that on the outer portion of the lower lash line and just connect it to the top. And then blending brush, one more blend through to even everything out. So that is it for the eyes. Hopefully this translates onto camera how glowy and natural it was and also how easy it was to do. I didn't need to use any eyeshadow products. I only used three brushes to do it and because I was using less pigmented products, I could afford to be a little bit looser, a little bit less precise with my implementation, which also makes it really great for beginners. You can of course also use blush in your eyes if you do want those more pinky tones. I think that looks really beautiful as well. I just want to go for a more bronzy glowy look. Now let's move on to the face. I'm going to take that bronzer again, but this time I'm going to take this bigger BH Cosmetics brush. This bronzer, by the way, is the Becca Sunlit Bronzer, and I like it for my more glowy days because it does have just that touch of shimmer and glow in it. Where, I don't know, it doesn't look, ugh, it almost looks matte, but not quite. And I think that's also how it translates on the face and sort of what I want. And then I do like to put some bronzer very quickly on my nose, on the sides of my nose, kind of to achieve a contour, but also on the top a little bit because your nose is a high point of your face and when you're in the sun, your nose gets tan more quickly than a lot of other parts of your face. So I think it makes sense to bronze that as well. Okay, we're looking healthy, dewy, fresh, we like it. Now I'm going to do blush. This is Milani Luminoso, also to be featured heavily in my Dresser Products video. And I'm just going to take this on this Morphe M530. This is the blush brush that I always use. I chose this peachy coral blush because I think it is a very daytime friendly, very like healthy sunkissed glow type blush on me. And it also brings a little bit of a luminous glow to the skin, which is why I chose it. Okay, next, highlight. I am going to go in with a more subtle highlight of the two that I use. So Mirame from Dose of Colors. You can of course figure out what your equivalent of Mirame would be for your own skin tone. And then I'm gonna take my Morphe M510, which is the highlight brush I always use, and bring this to my brow bone as well as well as across my cheeks, across my nose, across this bridge of my nose. I like to put highlight here, by the way. I've done it a few times and haven't really explained it because I think it emphasizes the shape of my nose because it brings light to like this little dip and again, pronounces that little dip. Brow bone, across the cheek, and up here. If I had to choose between using a highlighter and using a dewy foundation, 
I would choose a dewy foundation. Of course, I can use both, so I do. Because the dewy foundation will catch the light in a lot of the places that you would have highlighted anyway, but I think it also gives a luminous, glowy, healthy look to your skin, which a highlight doesn't really do because you're particularly placing it in specific areas. And so other areas like right here will look matte and depending on your skin, potentially dry. Next, I'm going to take my brow pencil. This is the one that I've just been using quite a bit lately. lately. It is the Kevin Aquan, I want to say precision brow pencil in dark brunette. And I'm going to do just my regular brow routine. Fill in the hairs at the front. As well as any sparse areas that I notice. Soften out the shape of my brow. Go through it with a spoolie. Brow gel, milk makeup, the Kush Fiber Brow Gel. I don't know which way the logo is facing. It will be hopefully one of those. And this is in the shade Grind. So this is a Lancome eyeliner pencil in the shade Chocolat. The, uh, it is the Drama Liquid Pencil. Extreme Longwear Eyeliner. Anyway, I'm just going to smudge this sort of along the lash line, heavier on the outer corner than on the inner corner, to provide a little bit more of a base for when the mascara goes on, and then I'm going to tap it out with my finger because I don't want it to look very precise. So yeah, it just brings like a little bit of a smudgy kind of dark look. Here's my mascara, Benefit Roller Lash, and the mini, as always. If you get a little bit of transfer, which I have right now, don't freak out. Just wait for it to dry, and then it'll brush away. Mascara is on. I'm going to take that blending brush and I'm going to use it to brush away that excess residue. I'm going to do some spreading, setting, setting spray. This is my Pixie Glow Mist, which I have been using quite frequently. I'm going to put it on my Beauty Blender and I'm just going to use it to tap into some of the powder products that I used to like set them and to make them look more natural and more glowy. That is basically everything except for our red lip here. Like I said, this is Anastasia Beverly Hills, their matte lipstick formula in the shade Spice. Spicy. And it is this gorgeous orangey red shade. Um, I do not like every lipstick from this line. I think some of them are really, really drying. Um, I think they're not all as pigmented as the rest, but this is one that I enjoy a lot and think is very pigmented, which is why I'm not using a lip liner. I also don't have a lip liner this color. Okay, so that's it for this look. Thank you so much for watching. I know that I just uploaded a couple of eyeshadow techniques videos, which involved more dramatic looks, more dramatic colors, so I did want to do something easier, a little bit more wearable, if you remove this lipstick from the mix. And of course, you could wear this with a nude lipstick, you could wear this with a tinted balm, you could wear this with something more subtle. And I really enjoyed doing it, and I'm actually gonna wear this look for the rest of the day. If you have any requests, for future videos, leave them down below. I'm planning on doing a full face of drugstore and some skincare videos coming up. But other than that, I'm super open to suggestions and ideas. I'm open to doing reviews or tutorials on specific looks if that is what you want. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you want to like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.